there are some considerations to think about with maker-centered learning. Learning is messy. Oh, so messy. The path people take to learning, vastly different. And you can't force them all on the same path. The journey is truly the long and winding road. Some of you might know that song. Plus, people drop stuff on the floor. Floors get messy. You got to get people to understand the idea of leaving the space better or cleaner than it was. And that's hard to get kids to clean up because it wasn't them that dropped it. It was somebody else. How comfortable can you get with organized chaos? That's an important thing. And everyone's got different levels. Time. Time. Such, such a big factor. True learning takes time. Creativity takes time. Curiosity takes time. How do we give everyone the time that they need to explore and learn? Everyone learns at a different pace. How do we find time for all those conversations that we want to have, where the learning happens, where the assessment happens, where we figure out what's really going on? We only have so many hours in class, but the learning is so much better when we give the time that they need. I haven't focused very much on tools and materials in this presentation. Just saying, you know, use what you got. Uh, for one reason, there's just an infinite number of materials. You know, we there's a little bitly down there. We uh, came up with a spreadsheet from A to Z kind of thing. It, we just keep adding to it. Uh, anything can be a material, even dirt. Use what you can easily get. Dumpster dive. Collect recyclables. Ask for donations. Be, be very specific and careful when you ask for donations. Pick like a day or a week kind of thing and ask for certain things um, to kind of keep it focused. Um, you know, another reason I didn't even talk about it, it, it Maker is not so much about the stuff. It's about the thinking and the conversations that you can have focused with, with that artifact focused. Fo we're focused on that artifact. Uh, tools, there's such a wide variety of tools at a wide variety of prices, too. Uh, no two schools have the same stuff. No school can have everything. You know, you got to get you know, what the kids want. What will they use? Sometimes they don't know, but sometimes they've got ideas. Um, what will your community support? Another important things. Um, remember, you can't have everything because... Storage is an issue for everybody. You need stuff to create with. You gotta have someplace to put it and some way to organize it. Um, you'll have projects that are in progress. You need some place to put them. Um, everybody's answer is different, but you gotta get a plan. You need shelves, maybe carts. Uh, portable is good. Get things on wheels, even shelves on on wheels to move them in, move them out. You're going to have a variety of totes and boxes. Um, I suggest clear so you can see what's in them. Even you're going to, ha even though you're going to have them all labeled awesomely, and some people suggest word labels and picture labels, um, you still want clear. Um, and you got to have things out. They've got to be visible. Um, they, they they can't use what they don't know they have. So if it's stuck in a closet somewhere, they don't know they can use it. Um, as the saying goes, out of sight, out of mind. You know, I know you're wondering, I've thrown a lot at you. you know, how do I do any of this? You know, as a Chinese proverb says, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Take one step, then put one foot in front of the other. That's picture, That song is that picture. Um, start with one topic, one maker-centered learning experience. One. Learn from it. It'll probably feel like it failed because it's such a such a different thing than most what most of us do. But anything new is hard and different. So you need to judge it and evaluate it differently. Um, ask the kids. How'd it go? What can we do better with it? Do you want to do, you want to do that again? Hopefully they will. I think they like the kids love learning and they love doing stuff. Um, maybe give them the reins on something and see where, where, where they will take things. You know, I, I, 
maybe be like the the bumpers and bumper bowling. Just keep them moving forward. Let them, you know, give them some some path, give them some width, and just keep them going down the lane. You know, here's what you got to remember. These kids will literally make the future. But if we don't give them a chance to learn how to do that now, what kind of future are they going to make? So I've got some resources I can share with you. Um, every space needs to have examples of how to connect paper and cardboard for construction purposes, since so much of the prototyping can be done with these simple, um, relatively inexpensive materials. So you need uh, examples like that. Sometimes it's a great first project for kids to, to partner up and make some of those, make some of their own posters, have them around the halls. Um, these pictures are easy to find with the Google search. 3D, 3D paper paper connection techniques, cardboard attachment techniques. Um, but you got to have them up and around for them to see them. There's a whole ton of books out there. Um, I have a list of a hundred, about a hundred books. I haven't read them all. Kind of categorized them a little bit for, for students, for teachers, for projects. I know there's many more out there. If I'm missing some really important ones, please let me know. Um, I will get them in there. The teacher books are intended for us to learn more about uh, maker-centered learning. These two are often considered to be the top, top of the pile. Uh, Invent to Learn by Sylvia uh, Marti Lebo Martinez and Gary Steger. And then the maker-centered learning book from the Agency by Design Initiative at Harvard's Project Zero. They're pretty much considered the textbooks. Um, since Dale Doherty kind of started the whole maker community thing with Make Magazine, you know, a while back, you should re really read his, his book, Free to Make. And then Lifelong Kindergarten by Mitchell Resnick from the MIT Media Lab is a great read about what education can and should be. It's very maker-centric. You know, educators often talk about the C's of education, but rare, rarely they talk about the P's. People working on projects based on their passions in collaboration with peers, in a playful spirit. Um, if you need some quicker reads about maker-centered learning and makerspaces, grab Worlds of Making by Laura Fleming and The Maker Mentality by Nicholas Provenzano. Laura is an educator in New Jersey, and Nick is an educator in Michigan. Obviously, there are tons of books uh, about maker projects. Which ones are the best depends on your audience and your goals and topics. Uh, kids' books uh, are examples of them. You know, they got all the whole Ada Lace and her pals, Rosie Rivera and her pals. Um, Oops is a great one for them to, to read or have around about making mistakes because we all know making is rife with oopses. You can also do story time and read parts of the stories to them. Uh, kids of almost all ages like being read to. You can read them in little chunks if you want. Uh, you can have picture books and elementary books in a high school setting. They just activate the brain differently, uh, which is an awesome thing. That's what we're trying to get make happen. Um, if you've got to do digital stuff, uh, especially if you've got to do it remotely, virtually kind of thing, I've created a list of um, creation design Websites that are browser-based, so they'll work on a Chromebook. Some people call this virtual makerspace. So bit.ly slash virtual maker, the V and the M are capital. That'll get you to that list of things. And it's from music to drawing to coding to Lego building, all sorts of things. Uh, meme, now do I have memes in there? Maybe not memes, um, but lots of things. There are some good hashtags to follow. Um, STEM and Maker have a great deal in common. So following, the, you know, if you some people are like, well, why am I following STEM? Well, because STEM and Maker are almost, are kind of like uh, two Venn uh, diagram circles that overlap and overlap a lot. And sometimes they overlap completely and sometimes not completely. So, you know, just follow some of those hashtags. Google some of those hashtags. If you're still wondering why Maker, 
and I didn't do a very good job for this past time. Uh, but here's the other thing. You know, we keep talking about workforce and where these kids are going to be in the future and what the skills and, and things they need to be able to do. Um, Maker helps develop all of the top 10 workforce skills that are needed to be successful. Uh, they really do. So you look at what they're talking about, 2015 to 2020. Um, they just, they help with all of them. If you have anything to share, any resources to share, uh, you know, pop them to me in the feedback or email them to me. Um, if you have some feedback on this presentation, that would be awesome too. Um, I can share uh, resources that you send to me out on Twitter for more, more people to get. Thank you for spending time with me. I always love to talk about maker ideas. If you want to talk about more about maker education, contact me on Twitter at Shirky17 or drop me an email, paul at paulshirkoff.org. Thank you very much and have an awesome day.